Hi everyone, today I'm here and joined with the devs from uh, Gans of Icarus. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hey, how's it going everybody? <laughs> Please uh, tell us uh, your role in the, inside the company, what to do. Uh, sure, I'm um, Howard. Um, I guess I am uh, more of a producer role. Um, I do basically a little bit of everything. Uh, from you know talking to you guys to uh, taking out the trash to uh, giving <laughs> massages, we'll do whatever it can to uh, make people happy. Wait, wait, massages? Where, where, <laughs> no, I lied. Where was I? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I mean maybe only only for Conrad if he really needs one. Oh. <laughs> and you, Jess? That's right. He deserves them. <laughs> um, so I'm Jess. I'm uh, one of the designers uh, at Muse. I also do a little bit of everything kind of outside design. Um, I do a lot of the writing and world building for the game, the locations, the backstory. Um, and I also am basically community manager. So I take care of the community, um, take care of our CAs, our community ambassadors who are player volunteers that kind of help out in the game. Um, plus, I don't know, other things I'm probably forgetting. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, so uh, just uh, take me to check the main uh, the main aspects of the game, the customization, what the game is all about. Just a little bit of everything to let know people who are listening to this what the game is all about. Sure. So um, it's basically a team blade team based multiplayer airship combat game. Um, where it's all about being on the ship. You're on a crew with three other people um, flying the ship, facing off against other ships, battling it out. And it's basically all about working together as a team. Um, there's different roles on the ship. You can be the pilot, the gunner, the engineer. Um, and everyone needs to be working properly to kind of keep that ship running, uh, keep it working. And it's the... The ship itself is like the one that gets gets the kills, gets the success. Um, so it's it's really uh, team play like you know, no other game. You're not like running out and being a hero. So captain uh, or pilot okay. flies the ship uh, and has a variety of tools to kind of um, you know perform different interesting aerial maneuvers. There's a little bit of naval strategy um, positioning going on. Uh, the gunner is the most uh, basic. Um, you know, they shoot the guns, but they they also have a variety of skills that can affect how the guns work and improve their aim and improve the damage. And then the engineer is basically like a healer, runs around and takes care of the ship. Um, they have a okay. You know, so um, let me ask a question. Uh, sure. I see that this game is mainly based on cooperation. So uh, what have you put in the game to? Make this cooperation easier. You have like a, uh, I've seen you have a voice voice chat system yeah. in the game. Yeah. Yep. So that was the the most basic uh, important thing to have in there. You know, a lot of games you you'll use something external if you want to like form groups and cooperate. But it's so core to this game that having the ability to communicate and talk to your crew is just so important. The crew that talks is going to be the crew that wins. Um, okay. So uh, yeah, no. I've seen this this game actually in uh, in how many is it only localized in English or also in other languages? Uh, right now only English. Okay. It, so uh, I remember the a game which I actually don't remember the name, uh -huh. but it had like an, a chat system based on numbers, so you can just use combination of numbers to give orders, give information, something like that. Yeah, I mean I think in our game. The battle situation is a little bit um, different team and strategies and whatnot. You had to react in a pinch, so... Oh, I, I cannot hear you. It's like some noise in the back. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's worse now. Yeah, that's actually not me. Is it for me? <laughs> Hold on. Let me try to <laughs> I think that's... Uh, yeah, this this is what happens when uh, you have no office from her being <laughs> work from home. Just are you doing construction <laughs> in the background? That's, there's a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no right. problem. Yeah, so um. Is that better. Yeah, yeah, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah, so right. with um, I think with this game, the communication is so, is so core um because the ship strategy changes um pretty much all the time. You have to react in a pinch. 
and you have to constantly adjust um, that. I mean, if you have a number key to yell at you, I mean, uh, pretty soon you either don't have enough commands to really direct your crew, or you just be like fumbling and you know going crazy with a number with, with a key. So I think I think what we thought it would be better is just to actually integrate voice chat, so you can talk, constantly talk to your, your crewmate. Um, I think that's a at least for this game, it, it should be a, a much better solution than having, um, you know, just key command, voice commands, and so on. Um, and the couple, couple other points. Um, so, in addition to crew chat, you also have captain to captain chat. So, say for instance, if you're playing a two v two, a three v three death match, or you know, resource race, or whatever, um, you can actually. Uh, go. You can actually talk to other captains uh, on the same team, so they oh. coordinate the strategy. Um, and if you have a boat with uh, AI crew, you can actually use uh, captain's command. And that there is potential to. Um, I mean, if we have have an actor with a really sexy voice, I guess there is a potential for uh, voice <laughs> command. But right now, it's just text. So yeah. yeah okay. Otherwise, you'd get us. <laughs> 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 okay, Man, so, the uh, forward we, guns. <laughs> we should just uh, start by having a look at the how the actual customization works, yeah. so everyone can see it. We can start from the gunner, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So you can hit uh, roll uh, in the upper right. Yeah. So hit that. Um, ready. I'm already in the gunner customization men menu. Cool. So. As a gunner, you have, I mean, what really distinguish the roles are the number of skills you carry. Um, mm -hmm. So in a pinch, you can actually do a little bit of everything. Um, you can repair. Um, you could potentially pilot, um, but if you jump on a helm while, say, the, the captain's or the pilot's off helm, he'll be, he might be really angry at you. So, um, <laughs> And uh, you have basically more gunning skills uh, or equipment at your disposal. And actually, the three skills versus one skill that you carry um, makes a world of difference. So that's kind of how we specialize the classes. So for example, uh -huh. if you click on, um, let's just say you click on the piloting equipment. Um, so there are a lot of different uh, skills, uh, maneuvering skills at your disposal. Um, the first one is actually Spyglass, which is a pretty unique uh, item. It is the like a primary way to scout for the enemy and tag them. Um, stealth is an element in this game, uh, especially that's especially true in some of the more uh, cloud, high cloud density or low visibility maps. So if you use Spyglass, you can uh, tag an enemy ship, and when the ship is tagged, um, it's it basically makes the whole team easier to spot. Um, it has a, a bracket uh, around the the enemy ship, and to actually avoid it, you can duck into a cloud. Um, and once you duck into a cloud, you can actually remove the tagging. So Spyglass is uh, um, so for instance Phoenix, Claw, Chicken, uh, Kerosene, it's Speed, uh, Hydrogen is uh, Altitude, and uh, Drug Shooting, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, Redo. So just uh, basically uh, for each class with uh, with this equipment, you just uh, add buffs, there are passive and active buffs? Yeah, exactly. Um, they're Mostly passive, um, pretty much all passive. But so w once you switch to that um, skill, is turned on, right? Um, oh, okay. And so, so I mean, well, sort of. So you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to like hit another key or press another mouse to actually activate it. So once you hit a number key, they all map to number keys. Um, and once you ma uh, hit a number key, then you uh, turn the skills on. But when you do, uh, it, it also has trade offs. So for example, if you use the the chicken foot, the phoenix claw. You have um, a short burst um, turning ability boost, so you can turn really fast. Um, but when you do that, your engine also burns. So you know you have to essentially use it wisely, um, and you know use it in the moment of combat. That's more oh, advantageous to you. Sure. So uh, actually, I've seen some people are arguing about. Uh, they said like that the engineer is a a better. <laughs> A better gunner, actually, because you can carry more uh, more repair and buff tools, and you just need one one round, one gun tool, one weapon equip equipment in the end because you you are just using one. Is that true, or I think I actually you... think for a while um, in beta, I would dis I, I mean I I would actually agree with um, that assessment, but that has since we we changed the the whole uh, gunning system um, uh, toward the 
I guess through the later, later parts of beta, um, that is definitely no longer true. Because um, I mean, if you so for instance, if you go down to the gunning skills uh, right now, yeah, you actually have all these skills are very disparate. I mean, they're very different and situational specific. So, um, so for example, um, right now I carry the grease round, which gives you a um, a big increase in rate of fire. So, if you mm -hmm. have a um, say a, a carronade, uh, a short range uh, weapon like the carronade, this rate increase in rate of fire is like uh, hugely, hugely uh, uh, advantageous. Um, but you know, so now we also have a, a skill called the heat sink. Uh, so, with the heat sink clip, you can actually um, be uh, immune to uh, flamethrower fire. So yeah. only on but only on the gun, right? Not, yeah, not the whole ship. Yeah, you're on the gun. So I think that's actually another very distinct and huge advantage. Yeah. and you know there's yeah there's uh, Lesma, so like which is like a uh, muzzle speed boost, which is great for long range. There is um, uh, the the Lagnagar shot, which is basically like I'm super powerful shot but damages your guns so i mean now i think right now the gunning skills are very are more situational yeah yeah exactly they're, they're much more situational much more distinct um and you know we definitely see players carrying all sorts of uh gunning skills and as an engineer you can't just carry like one skill one gunning skill and somehow that will make a difference okay so uh we just take um take a look at the actual look uh, customization <laughs> so right. here we have just okay this the look is just skin color eye color eye color yep. so you plan like to add uh, more hairstyle something like that yeah. in the future or yeah definitely and also um, if you go to uh, go go back out and go to the store yeah so here we actually have a bunch of uh, cosmetic um, customization stuff like for the character so you have Costumes of different classes, uh, which are mm -hmm. you know essentially designed with a certain contour um, in mind that accentuate the different classes, um, and you also have uh, hats and hairs and goggles yeah. and whatnot. Oh, okay, and so this the game uh, you can purchase the game for uh, about I think nineteen euros and in dollar I don't remember how much it is. Well, it's a straight it's a straight conversion uh, dollar euro. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that, I mean, but, that is uh, that is actually controlled by Steam. So, <laughs> yeah, but sometimes it's all totally nonsense. I mean, there there was a game that was like seven seven euro, yeah, six euros, but it pounds. It was seven and a half pounds. Oh wow! So it's like sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's actually not. Right. But uh, I've seen one thing is. Uh, I think it stresses even more the importance you put on cooperation that the four pack actually costs uh, just a bit more than two copies of the game. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, all the other games I've seen on Steam, they usually, it's a standard, usually it's uh, three copy, four copies for the price of three. Right. But you've decided to go for four copies for the price of two, actually. Yeah. So it's kind of a, a good deal to buy to buy four copies. I mean, it's like 10 euros each, it's not that much. Oh, great, thanks. Yeah, I mean, we definitely <laughs> want to encourage people, I mean, because four pack is um, a great, an ideal number for us. Um, it's, you know, the size of your crew. So yeah, sure. we figure it would be a great, um, good way to get players to, to form uh, crews. And, okay. and we've heard that players really appreciate that too. Like most of the people that come in, even like during beta, people that came to ask for keys, the thing they would say is, oh, my friend is playing this and they want me to play, so I'm here for a key. <laughs> or I want to get keys for all my friends so I can make them play. So it, you know, it's good to give people a good deal to help them do that because they're really coming to it in groups and playing with friends, which makes it a lot of fun. Okay, sure. So uh, while I make you some more questions, maybe we can start with the actual gameplay so we can show a bit of the game. Okay. So you create the game, right? Create? So I, I... Uh, yeah, I just created a match. Okay. Uh, so, uh, is this one? Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, man, I guess I have to uh, pilot. Ouch. <laughs> oh, I, I'll go, I, I can. I can. <laughs> I can oh, we all went to you. It's okay. 
Yes. Oh. Who's piloting? Oh. I changed. Oh, are you piloting? Oh, nice. All right. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I, I'm bad pilot, but that's okay. No, I'm, I'm an even worse pilot. So. Okay. okay. Yeah, um, I don't know. I can fly, but... I just use this ship. Uh, uh, while we wait to start, I will just show you... I'll just show you the... I just show out the actual customization for the ship. Oh yeah. So uh, I'm I'm actually looking at uh, this ship, which is the Pyramidian. So, as the viewers can see in the image, we have uh, these squares are representing the position of the guns, and here we can change the guns. So, uh, um, I I've seen there are two two kinds of slots, something like that, two different kinds of slots, or. I don't really get which weapon you can put in which. Oh, essentially, in which um, slot. Essentially, if you click on the slot, you know what all the uh, the weapons that are available yeah. for that slot. Sure. And uh, um, the I guess the the different ships have different uh, loadouts you mentioned or different layouts. Yeah. Um, and so Pyramidians all small guns, and there are only really few, uh, three ships that can carry uh, medium guns uh, or basically the big oh, guns. Okay. Um, no, most noti no, noticeably, the Galleon. The Galleon has four big guns on the bottom. But essentially, all the ships have different trade-offs. So while the Galleon is um, big and powerful, because it's big, it takes more coordination because all the repair points <laughs> yeah, sure. and decks. Uh, it also doesn't have a gun in the front and weak from the back, so it, it's prone to you know frontal or like. Um, basically, back assaults um, and medium guns have more limited uh, motion, uh, range of motion, so they are more prone to say being attacked from above and below. Um, so, anyways, the the galleon um, is a, a heavy coordination, uh, slow ship. So all the ships yeah. have different trade offs. Whereas if you have the squid or the goldfish, they are you know much faster, okay. much more maneuverable. Yeah, of course you have put all the data, so the ship health, hull, and all the speeds, vertical, horizontal. Yep. They're yeah. all in, in there, so you can have like an idea of how the ship will work. Yeah. So um, I'm actually made this ship. It's uh, I call the Ram. It's not a random <laughs> name. It's because you charge actually at enemies, <laughs> because it ha it has two shotguns on the front. Okay. Ah. So you just charge at your enemy and <laughs> shot, <laughs> right. and hope they die. Before you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's, that's, that's a good strategy. <laughs> so actually, I have another question for you. Uh, does the, sh the, the how the damage works um, in the impact between ships? Uh, you mean like when you ram? Yeah. Yeah, it's basically re um, pure like physics, real physics. So it's like you know mass and uh, some combination of mass and velocity. Oh, okay. Sure. So, um, actually, the, sh the shape of the, of this ship, which is actually like, it has a big point, on, on, on a big spear on the top, it actually doesn't change in the damage or something like that. Yeah, I mean, with this ship, um, it's designed actually for your strategy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, it's good for. I mean, if the balloon's more protected, um, it's harder to take the balloon down. So, um, oh, by the way, so like all the different uh, points on the ship have uh, can cause could affect the ship in different ways. So, if your balloon goes out, you're stuck descending, um, and you're stuck losing altitude. And uh, you know, say for instance, if your engine goes out, you can start veering um, and uh, losing thrust. So, other essentially all the um, the components affect the ship in different ways, and you know, the physics are actually pretty real, pretty much real. Okay. Uh, just just so as real as we can get in game. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, I have another question for you. With actually, how how the the map balance actually works? Um, the map balance is no, 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 not the balance. The bounce. Oh, it's just basically a gentle wind that pushes you uh -huh. back, kind of. Oh, okay. So you cannot actually. Of course, you have no invisible walls because it just pushes you back. I mean, it's actually an invisible wall, but it pushes you back if you go. Yeah. Too, too far. Okay, nice. And the farther out, I actually the never went pushes. so far away. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. If you never know that they're there, then that means that it works the best. Alright, I'm on the side gun. Blaming the junker. Oh my god. I actually. <laughs> I actually confused the colors. <laughs> I right didn't now, got right that. I thought the red one was. Yeah, right now we're in good shape because I mean the enemies are more separated, um, and we are coordinating our attack. So we should see the junker go down. 
and the jump yeah. is down. Awesome. Yeah, it's really important okay. to keep by your Sorry. ally in these matches, and if you know if the other two ships manage to corner you while your teammates somewhere off on the other side of the map, it's no good. <laughs> and so, uh, actually, oh, I fell off you, the ship. I've seen that. I don't know if it's the same now because I haven't checked the game in the past few days, but. Uh, the texture on the on the big objects and on the on the ground are still low quality when you go near, or you actually succeed in making something to make it look better or yeah, something like that. If you uh, turn this game on higher settings or like the high, it, it's a, it's on higher settings. Oh, okay, yeah, then it should look better. <laughs> but uh, maybe think, maybe because I am. But a bit. I mean, gen generally though, yeah, generally though, like it's gonna be um, a balance between you know. Um, basically texture quality and also performance. Basically just different um, optimization work that we do to make it look as good as we can, but you know, not blow off someone's... Uh, yeah, sure, I mean... Graphics. <laughs> so. Um, so, we're checking this. Yeah, just going around this ship is... <laughs> yeah, I am... Um, okay, just go for the other one. I'm getting the engines back up. Are they, are they two junkers or something? Yeah? Uh, yeah, actually, the yeah, both junkers. Junkers. <laughs> so someone argues that the, the junker is actually a giant target because it's quite slow. That's what they say. I I think the junker is actually really good as a support ship with a coordinated team. Um, you know, on its own, you know, like a galleon can kind of sit there and maybe like fight off some enemies on its own because it's kind of tanky. It's sort of a solo ship that way maybe and squid it's very fast and can kind of like work on its own but the junker works well as a support ship yeah and also uh, the junker is um, the gun position of the junker is really good um, so yeah I think you know there, there are definitely some uh, advanced, advanced uh, pilots who uh, you know swear about the junker uh, well, at least they like the junker um, because the junker is like if you coordinate right you can actually align the side guns, uh, and you can have potentially three guns firing um, at one time in the target if the captain can align. Oh, but you know we're mulling the junkers down in this match. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the junker, you think is actually better, like in four v four, or no? I think I think junker is. Uh, ju I, I I think the junker balance is actually pretty good right now. Um, like something that we're looking at are right now just in terms of balance are you know howitzer um, the use of howitzer in the game and also like the speed of say the squid um, and potentially the goldfish um, but junker I think we're in good shape. Okay, so uh, for future updates, uh, I I've seen you plan to add like a single player something like that co-op yeah mode. What what's that all about? Um, basically, yeah, like you said, just adding um, co-op um, experience to the game, um, something that we're, we definitely want to work towards. Um, so, you know, so, so I mean, part of it is just working on, like, scripting AI logic. And, um, oh, so it's, it will be like uh, something more than a fleet versus uh, an AI fleet, or actually some kind of story mode, something like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think Jess would definitely integrate a lot of story into this, but it'll be, um, you know, more like you're on a crew on a ship, and there'll be like say a different AI enemies, um, potentially bosses. Um, wow. Yeah. Oh. So there you go. victory. <laughs> Flawless. Good job. Um, so yeah, oh, they, pilot level up. So uh, <laughs> talking about pilot level up. So <laughs> how the level yeah, yeah. system actually works? Okay, so the leveling system is a, a little different from uh, most other games. There's no like XP uh, that you grind out or anything. It's achievement based. Um, when I say achievements, you could also call them missions. They're sort of a hybrid achievement mission system. Um, so if you look at your stats page. Um, yeah then you see your summary of all your levels. And then for each class, um, actually pilot's called captain yeah. right now, um, you have these uh, from six to nine um, missions or achievements that are currently active. And you level up just by achieving some number of that. And at higher levels, you have to get more to level up. Uh, I believe it's three to like your first level. Um, then it goes to like four, then five. And you know, as, as you go through these 
stacks, um, you know, they get harder. And so it's not like an achievement system where they're all there at once, but it's stacked uh, just one at a time. Um, okay, so should we play another game while we go forward on this? Yeah, totally. Uh, this time I will just not pilot a wheel, maybe. <laughs> Show a bit of the gunner uh, okay. so we can... Uh, I will pilot then. Okay. I will engineer. So uh, actually the there are no bonuses for leveling up. I mean, it's just means you are you are good or that you have played many games, something like that. Yeah, so we, we decided not to um, unlock like equipment or ships or better things as you level up because we wanted this to be a very strategic game based on skill. We wanted you to be better because you're just better at the game. You've been playing longer and know what to do rather than that you've unlocked all of the like better guns and can blast people out of yeah, the sky. Sure. So I mean, you have you have a kind of progression, but you don't have to play it like three hours a day to to get to stay. I mean, to reach the level of everyone else, so you, right. you don't get balance and matchmaking problems, something like that. Yeah, and the progression is designed basically to reward you for mostly the things you would do as you keep playing. So it's meant to be a token of I've been playing the longest, not I like sat down and grinded out like killing this one thing with this one gun like 500 times to the exclusion of the rest of the game. So it's, it's a mark of status that you know, as you play longer you're meant to rise up. Uh, there's obviously some things to chase and work on, but you can move up at a fairly steady pace without having to like, you know, focus on okay. it to the exclusion of good gameplay. Sure. So, um, actually, we have uh, you have two game modes. Which, uh, one is a team that match, and the other one is like uh, capture the point, something like that. Uh, do you plan to add more game modes uh, apart from the co-op? Uh, yeah, we have um, ideas for several uh, game modes that are kind of in development. Um, some more variations on King of the Hill, like a Crazy King uh, is probably the next one we're going to come out with, which is a capture the point where the active point moves around, so you have to kind of chase it around the map. Um, <laughs> and then other types like um, like VIP, uh, you know, with one ship that has to be protected or with a payload. Um, capture the flag type maps. So there's there's quite a few modes that we're going to be working on developing. Um, yeah. And nice. rolling out. And I, I like the idea of like something different from the standard King of the Hill or something like that. So with a moving point, I, I think it will be a, a nice mode to play. And uh, what about uh, the copy you sold? How many copy actually you sold of the game? Uh... Mm, I guess I have to check. <laughs> <laughs> We've been too busy playing to look at the numbers. <laughs> oh, or like, or like, or the game, putting out fire. Oh right, that too. Because I mean, of course, the more the more you sell, the more you will be involved in developing the game even more. Yeah. So that's that's the, 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 the why I'm asking. Yeah, for sure. I mean the. I, I, I uh, checked before. Uh, the overall um, sales has been pretty good uh, for us, you know, with, with launch and I guess with um, the hurricane and everything. <laughs> so, yeah, the launch has actually been been really good. And now it's just really up to us to, you know, keep supporting the game and keep telling people about the game and, and whatnot. So, uh, all the games runs on your server, or it's like, or it's like something different. Um, we basically, yeah, I mean. It's, uh, dedicated, uh, it's run a dedicated service, um, and we use a basically a hosting company. Mm -hmm. um, okay. For better or worse. <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, I didn't figure out how the Manticore works, how that GAN works. Um, oh, the Manticore? So, um, it's basically fires a ton of rockets really fast. It, they don't do a lot of damage, but it's great for um, disabling components and for kind of creating this aerial of denial, area of denial effect. Um, so yeah, some people, you know, it looks really big and flashy and impressive. And, you know, some people are like, oh, why aren't they dying? Like, I'm hitting with them over and over, but it's it's not meant to be a ship killer. Um, it's, it's more of a support or like, you know, shock and awe strategy. Um, it, yeah, it's it's great for um, you know, say for instance, taking ar armors down, disabling different components, and once you do, ideally, um, so for ideally, um, who who is repairing the ship? <laughs> yeah, we're on the broad side. I mean, 
with this ship, it's good for turning, but you know, not necessarily quick. So, you know, we're, we're basically up against the broadside of a uh, galleon, which is always a bad idea. And so this uh, this is actually a, like a sniper ship. So you have two snipers and, and yeah, uh, this, this ship is definitely good for um, you know for longer range battles. And the rockets here. Uh, I have a flamethrower actually, just in case. Oh. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do right now is to try to stay in you know in some decent range so we can uh, disable the galleon um, as much as we can, and then you know move in for a more devastating, f some kind of flaming uh, watch out combo. <laughs> Plan anyway. Uh, I've seen, uh, like, you have sent me an email because I'm probably in your newsletter that you're planning some kind of charity event. Oh, yeah, yeah, thanks for mentioning that. So, like, we just put an item um, into the game. Well, they're using the kind of same strategy against us. Oh, crap. <laughs> so, the, the, yeah, we basically put an item into the game. Essentially, all the proceeds from that, from those item sales, um, go to um, just relief effort for um, Hurricane Sandy. Which is like you know right near us, or right around us, um, and we, we've all like been affected by it. But I mean, you know, like I we went to volunteer, um, and it's I think people are really being hit hard. So just want to try to do something for them. Yeah, sure. So if if anyone was watching wants to help, you can buy this item. Which 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 item is is it? Uh, it's in the goggle section. It's basically um, like a medic uh, mask. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, I have like a, a question for you, uh, which you may or may not answer to, you yep. can decide. So, uh, as you probably know, uh, there's a game called uh, Air Buccaneers, which is coming out yeah. later. Uh, so, basically, it is the same game, but it has like uh, boarding. So, uh, what I think is that they are trying to exploit the the success I, I think this game has to try to sell because I mean people want more of this game and of course there is only this one there are no no other game like this yeah I mean I think with Air Buccaneers um, it's actually quite different if people really look at it um, it's quite different from like just pretty much all different types of standpoints um, I mean it's it's also it also features airship and people and people on airship but um, but as far as like you know our our style um, you know artistic vision, but also how the game is played, um, they're vastly different. So essentially, with, with Air Buccaneer, um, I think because they made a decision to go boarding, um, there is more definitely a lot more melee FPS driven. Um, so yeah, yeah that's sure. some like you know ship combat, but um, the ships move at a much slower pace, and you know you basically have to get closer. A lot closer, um, and you know when when you jump on boarding, essentially it's a um, it, it's kind of a more melee FPS experience. Yeah, sure. A lot of ways. So I think what we try to do is just focus more on you know the the team play. Um, yeah, I mean this this game. It, the, while the you may think that the pacing may be slow, it actually it, it actually isn't because I mean even if there are only four ship, you you always end to meet to meet up. I I don't really get how, but <laughs> I mean. <laughs> The map is, is really huge, but you still find ships near you. Yeah, so, uh, especially in, uh, in this match, in a 3v3 uh, match. Um, and you can actually create a lot of um, you know, combat strategy as a result, you know, because so we, I mean, obviously, oh, sh right now, falling off the ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so right now, we're, we're in a 1v1, like, you know, just totally dual situation, even though, you know, there's, um, but, uh, with what we, what we're trying to do is like you know so you can actually have you know through communication and through coordination you can actually create like mismatches essentially in the game um, and so I think uh, with essentially with a focus on ship to ship combat and, and you know the teamwork experience um, we can actually add more strategy to the game and we, we can make all the different weapon choices more meaningful so essentially that's that's kind of the path that we're on. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, with boarding, just just to speak on boarding generally. I think it's something that I be really thought about and decided not to do um, as far as like I, don't know, I would say I, I would say like two three years out. Um, and it's just really 
so that we can focus on team play. Because I mean, with boarding, it's definitely more melee and it's more individualistic. Um, so it's it's like we guess play the two and just really want to focus on on having a good. Um, well, at least as good of team experience as we can make it, and as, as um, varied of a shift to shift uh, we can make it. I guess what? Yeah, sure. We're like, you know, EA big, and we're making Battlefield, and we can try to see we can, how we can manage to with like endless budget. But, you know, I think I think right now, focusing on on one thing and trying to do it well. Um, yeah, sure. It's better. And um, I've seen also that the, the strategy varies also on ship to ship. For example, I mean, some ship, most of the people go like one captain, two gunners, one NG. But for example, on this ship, I'm actually doing not not much. I should have picked another NG to maybe super better. So like two NGs and and one gunner in, for example, in this ship, maybe it would have been better. And so we have a lot. We have a lot of. Strategy for the yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely. I think part of it is just me being scared of the galleon, so I'm like, you know, <laughs> hiding around. <laughs> all right, but but yeah, uh, all right, fine. Uh, we're uh, things to do, we are in the thick of things now, so <laughs> be, be prepared. So, uh, you can recognize the team from the actual colors of the flag if I'm not oh, wow. wrong. But I mean, for example, this ship is is red and and blue. Why? <laughs> uh, those are just basic. They reflect the colors of the team, um, and they are not made to be the most noticeable. And that's definitely done intentionally. Um, so we, so with even with this map, um, the visibility is uh, lower, right? I mean, it's it's not as bright as the desert map that we were just in. Um, so yeah. I think part of it is just, it's for you to um, you know stealth and hide. Um, yeah, come on. All right, we're, we're definitely doing good, and uh, they're up though. Um, so a lot of a lot of it is just oh wow, I didn't anticipate that they are flaming us. Um, and so a lot of a lot of this is uh, it's kind of like using um, say the spyglass, coordinating as a team, um, and have the stealth element of the game uh, be more in play. Um, so I mean, you know, if you, if you don't recognize it, I mean, it's also a little bit more realistic. I mean, in a, in a battle situation, you know, life. Yeah, sure. Sometimes at night, I mean, just it's hard to tell friends or foe, and really, what makes a difference is communication. So that's kind of what we try to do. Yeah, but uh, I've seen. I, at least I don't think. Uh, is there a friendly fire or? Ah, uh, yeah, no. There's there's no friendly fire. So that's I think that's a, a, a good counterbalance. We think um, for mm -hmm. you know. Just basically the, having this more stealth elements and having the team colors be a little bit harder to recognize the outcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this, is this yeah. is this going to change? I mean, the fact that when you die, uh, it actually puts you walking walking on in the, on the map. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of interesting. I mean, it's something that we are, we're definitely thinking of polishing more, um, and you know, basically add a say a better animation or better like you know, that. Um, Thing, but uh, some people really like it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's peaceful. You just get to walk around on the sand for a while, look up and watch the ships floating overhead, put your back on. It's, it's a nice, peaceful way for your ship to blow up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, alright, we're totally. Oh, it's the flame. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're getting. Uh, I mean, I'm choosing to uh, battle this galleon in front of us uh, because our galleon's supporting. But, you know, we're, we're totally getting surrounded. Yeah, one six. <laughs> <laughs> ouch, ouch, ouch. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're in an unenviable position because, I mean, we're down, uh, so I want to get into the heat of the battle. But, you know, our ship is definitely designable for long range. Uh, yeah, sure. So. I mean, this, uh, I'm not sure if, if it's actually true. Is this one of the one with the less HP or. Spires are like okay, I think. Um, like yeah. Squid, for example, has uh, you know lesser HP. Um, wait, is that right? Uh, or basically, yeah, general like combination of um, like fewer HP and armor health. But Spire is, I mean, it, it's just a, it's it's really distinct or, or different ship, I would say. 
because I mean, it doesn't really move fast, um, and you know, it has a, a medium gun, and it's just designed to be more. I, I think I personally, I think it's, it's definitely good for a longer range or medium to longer range battle, like how we took down that that galley initially. But now, like we're desperate, so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I always forget to change the rounds. So yeah, I mean, they're, they're also forming up, so it's just like, ah, not giving us an opening. But I guess, yeah, I mean, I think my strategy is to still flank the goldfish trying to take it down. <laughs> At least hopefully we can take it down in time. I, I would love to say, not while I'm engineering, I ended up on the other team, if you didn't know, but yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's Jesse. quite likely to happen while I'm engineering, so you just might. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no, the whole, oh. Yes. There we go. All right, so now let's form up with our teammate, and let's go after the other galleon, so we can turn, turn, it, turn the match around. Yeah. So, uh, which is the score? For winning in uh, uh, they're, they're a game point. So. Yeah, sure. Uh, this, this map is the seven kills. Seven. Seven. Okay. Ah. Oh. Yeah, they're using a. Uh, Why is falling down so? They're using the shoe band skill. So they're using oh, okay. a skill. Because they know that we're sniping them, so they want to uh, change sideline. Well, it didn't work so well. Yeah, but actually, I think yeah, three. that case is an opening. So, as we're maneuver out of their, they, they just move, they maneuver themselves out of their broadside, so which is good. Uh, so, uh, on average, how many people do you have in the lobby? Uh, in the lobby, I think it really varies. Um, I think we can um, average, I don't know, some somewhere between two hundred to. Um, Five, six, seven, eight hundred uh, in any given time. Uh, it just really depends on, I guess, who's who's um, awake, who's not. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, what? What's? Ooh. It's not. Oh my God! It's. Let's slow this oh, down. Go down. All right, they're they're going down. Their balloons out. Okay. <laughs> Flaming up. Yeah. Following them. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh what? Oh. <laughs> 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 well, that was a good game. Okay. Uh, thank you for joining me and for showing us what the game is all about. So if you want to buy the game, it's on Steam for 19 euros or the four copies for about 40 euros. I really suggest uh, that you buy the, the, four, the four copy bundle because you can play with your friends. I mean, it's better if you have a voice chat like on Skype or something like that. With people you know, it's a really a lot of fun. Thanks for joining me. For joining me. For joining me. Thank and you. Yeah, thanks a lot. See you next time. <laughs>